it was supposed to be a three and a half to four hour procedure to do what they had done. And it ended up being 11 and a half hours face down on the table. It could have been uh, anesthesia. It could have been uh, a half a dozen different things could have caused a problem. But after the operation, I came out with no vision in my left eye and my top half of my right eye, no vision. And the bottom half of the right eye has got holes in it where I've got blank spots. It took everything I had done and was able to do at up to March 4th of 2009, and it went away. Uh, I was a hunter, as you can see up there in the wall. I've got some, some deer heads up there, and I've got my bow hanging up there. And uh, I was a bow hunter, a competition shooter mm -hmm. in 2001. I was Louisiana, Arkansas, Tennessee, Oklahoma, and Texas state champion. I went away. Everything I did up to that point was gone. The life I had prior to that vision loss ceased to exist. The, the friends I had that were hunting buddies, Fishing buddies, all of a sudden I attained the bubonic plague. They gone. I've never seen a one of them since I lost my vision. I uh, I'd get up in the morning, I'd go sit in my recliner, I'd turn off the lights, turn on the TV, and I'd be there until nighttime. Then I'd go to bed and I get up the next day and repeat the same process. I quit there for that period of time. I figured there was nothing for me in this world to do. I had no focus, no goals, no, couldn't see no light at the end of the tunnel. If I'd have lost more vision than what I did at the time, if, if, if I'd have, and, and, and believe me, I, I have the fondest respect for anybody that has a total vision loss and overcomes it. I don't think I could have overcome it. And that's an honest answer. I really don't think I could have. Because that world just, I, I, I see what I can do at this point. And if I couldn't have done, done that, I, I wouldn't be here. One of the guys that we didn't really realize that we were not really close, close in Vietnam, but we did know one another. Well, he lives up in northeastern Missouri. And they came down here for three or four days and spent three or four days with us. He's a boy about my size and about 40 pounds more than me. And it was kind of like, Get up. What do you mean, get up? You've been sitting on it too long. Get up. Time to do something. Okay. Uh, and if you don't get up, I will get you up. That didn't appeal to me either. So it was kind of like, okay, uh, I'll get up and start doing something. If, if, that's, if that's the alternative, yeah, I'll get up and start doing something. So he was one of the motivating factors that really kind of got me to rationalize that, you know, I got to do something before I just lay here and deteriorate to the point to where I can't do something. I had a table saw, I had a radial arm saw, I had a drill press. It was like, I know I've got this stuff. Can I handle this stuff? Let's figure out what I can do with it. I had no clue. And I just muddled through it until I figured out, okay, this just turns out that way. You turn it on and you, and you make it turn, go from square to round. Uh, 
and, it, and it, like I say, and it just, it just proceeded from there. It's given me a sense of wanting to get up and do something in the morning rather than hibernate. I've got in excess of 100, 110, maybe 120 hours in some of them bowls. But that's 120 hours of my mind is right there. The world goes away. There's guys that look at what I do and they go, you're crazy to spend that much time making some of them bowls with all them little pieces. They're probably right. I make the bowls for me. I'm not making it for anybody else. I'm making it for me. Somebody comes along and likes it, that's great. They don't like it, that's great too, I don't care. I'm not trying to appease anybody in this world right now other than myself because I had gotten in such a deep hole that I don't want to go back there. That wasn't a fun place to be. I don't try to cookie cut. I make something, ooh, I like that. Well, just because I like that doesn't mean I gotta make 27 more. Now let's go to something a little bit more complicated. Let's make it a little bit thinner. Let's challenge myself because if I don't challenge myself, ain't nobody else gonna do it. If you're looking at that, you can see that also. Yes? Yeah. I can. If I focus here, I don't, I, I've got, I don't, I don't see beyond there. Looking at that right there. So my challenge is doing what I'm doing is I can't see 90% of what I'm doing. If I catch myself getting out of focus or thinking about something else while I'm doing something with any of these nasty tools that that are very unforgiving if you get, get your finger in them. I'll shut it down and I'll walk away from it. It's either that or I'm gonna lose something I don't wanna be losing. I've got two chairs sitting right outside, right there. That's my take a break chair. That's my, I'll go out there and take a nap. I'll sit down there in a chair and if, I'm, if I get tired, or I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm losing focus on what I'm doing, it's time to walk away from it. Let's say you're, you're turning something, all of a sudden you hit a little void in there. You wanted it to come out like this, well now it can't because you hit that void. You gotta clean that void out of there. Same thing, I mean, you know, it, it's where I'm going right now in life. Uh, you know, my life was headed in this direction and then it went that way. What happened to me was, and I was told this, was one in a million. My biggest hope of everything, anything at this point is that someplace down the line, I can inspire, uh, assist, somebody that was in the boat I was in four years ago to get out of that boat. Don't throw your hands up in the air and go, I quit. You know, if just one person goes, well, damn it, if he can do it, I can do that too. There's no reason for me to be, to not do it. I've got two guys that right before the first of the year approach me, would I help them, would I teach them? Sure. And of course, first thing I did when they walked in the shop was I handed them blindfolds. What's that for? I said, well, I'm gonna teach you. The only way I can teach is you can't see what you're doing. <laughs> and they, they thought it was kind of funny. <laughs>